The first Scottish War of Independence is full of fascinating characters, from Edward Longshanks to William Wallace, Robert the Bruce to many others. Yet there is a figure in this war that is a forgotten hero. Wallace has a statue, Robert the Bruce has a visitor centre. Yet most people walking down the street in Scotland today do not know who this figure is. Let me tell you more. Today I've taken you to Bothwell Castle, a medieval castle in South Lanarkshire that changed hands numerous times between Scotland and England during the Wars of Independence. It was home to Clan Murray for a period as well as the son of the Black Douglas, Archibald Douglas, who married into Clan Murray. Construction began on this castle in the 13th century by ancestors of Clan Murray, and it is a member of Clan Murray that is the subject of today's video. This is the story of Andrew Du Murray, otherwise known as Andrew Murray a major commander during the First Scottish War of Independence who played a crucial role in the first phase of the war. In fact, without Andrew Murray, William Wallace may never have become the figure we know today, a figure revered 700 years later whose life was detailed so well in that super accurate documentary Braveheart. In all seriousness, it was the unity of the forces of Murray and Wallace that became such a pain for England and led to Wallace's greatest victory on the battlefield. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Now given that I'm standing here in front of a castle, it should hardly come as a surprise that Andrew Murray was from nobility. His grandfather, Sir Walter du Murray, began construction on this castle and his family held lands in the province of Murray in northeastern Scotland amongst other places, including Bothwell of course. Andrew Murray's father was Sir Andrew Murray, Lord of Petty, a Scottish baron who held the position of Justiciar of Scotia which was the most senior legal office in the high medieval kingdom of Scotland to the north of the River Forth and the River Clyde. His mother was an unnamed daughter of Lord John Common I of Badenoch. Although little was known of his youth, he probably trained to be a knight, learning military skills and strategy that would go on to serve him well in his later years. Resistance was undoubtedly in his blood. Both Andrew Murray and his father, Sir Andrew, fought at the Battle of Dunbar in 1296 for King John Balliol. The Scots were defeated however, and both Andrew and his father were captured. His father was taken to the Tower of London and died there as a prisoner in 1298. Andrew however was considered of less significance, and was held prisoner at Chester Castle. Within a year or so, he managed to escape and made his way back to his father's lands in the north of Scotland. This was at a time when resistance was rising in Scotland. Violence was breaking out across the country against English rule, with the taxes imposed on the people of Scotland and conscription into the army being two main reasons for the outbreaks. As a chronicle from May 1297 states, the perfidious race of Scots began to rebel. In central Scotland, William Heselrig, the English Sheriff of Lanark, was murdered in May 1297, during an attack on the town led by William Wallace and Richard Lundy. In the north the same month, Andrew led his own uprising in Murray, raising his standard at Auk. News of Murray's actions drew supporters to him. Sir William Fitzwarren, the English constable of Urquid Castle on the shores of Loch Ness, wrote to King Edward in July 1297, some evil disposed people have joined Andrew Murray at the castle of Auk in Ross. King Edward I sent more detachments north to try and suppress the rebellion. Murray pushed on regardless, almost taking Urquhart Castle from English hands. A report sent to King Edward describes how a very large body of rogues swept through the province of Murray towards the Spey, destroying the lands of Duffus, laid waste and captured the castle. King Edward tried to use Scottish nobles he had released from prison who he thought were loyal to him to suppress the revolt, although this had little effect with English officers suspicious that these nobles were playing a double game. Then in summer 1297 Murray faced a dilemma. King Edward proposed to release his father, Sir Andrew, from imprisonment in the tower to serve in the ranks of the English army in Flanders, if his son was prepared to take his father's place as a royal hostage. A safe conduct allowing him to come to England was issued under the King's seal. It is not known if this letter ever reached him, but if it did, it was ignored, as his father died in the tower the following year. By this point, England had lost control of large parts of Scotland. In September 1297, Wallace and Murray met at Dundee and joined their forces. They soon marched their army south to Stirling to meet an English army heading north. What ensued was the Battle of Stirling Bridge, a resounding victory for the Scots and a great piece of strategy from Wallace and Murray. 
They positioned their armies on the north side of the River Forth and the narrow Stirling Bridge. The original bridge is no longer here, but it was a narrow wooden bridge, with horsemen only able to cross two abreast. It literally would have taken hours for an army of thousands to cross the bridge. When the English forces finally crossed, it meant that their army was split in two by the river, with the English soldiers on the north side trapped on the three sides by the loop of the river. Wallace and Murray waited until as many of the enemy had come over as they believed they could overcome. Then they ordered an attack. The English force on the Scottish side of the fourth was obliterated, with a few hundred only escaping by swimming across the river. It is estimated that around 5,000 English soldiers were killed in total. The English on the south side of the river retreated to Berwick. Murray is said to have played a key role in the Scottish strategy at the battle. Andrew Murray was mortally wounded in the battle, however, when a straight arrow was said to have pierced him, and he died in the months after due to his wounds, although the precise date of this is not known. Two letters sent to the mayor of Lübeck and Hamburg, two of the leading towns of the Hanseatic League, suggest he survived until at least November, as they were issued by, and note that Murray's name comes first. Andrew de Murray and William Wallace, leaders of the Kingdom of Scotland and the community of the realm. There is debate as to whether he was alive at this point, but regardless, he died around this time. He lived a fascinating life nonetheless, and if he wasn't mortally wounded at Stirling, he may have changed the course of history given his lineage, political connections, and accomplishments. His son actually went on to marry one of Robert the Bruce's sisters, but that is a story for another time. Many have argued that if Murray hadn't have died after the Battle of Stirling Bridge, then Wallace would have won what turned out to be his greatest defeat at the Battle of Falkirk. But what is the truth about the Battle of Falkirk? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.